Hello again, officer. How are things? I'm a Nighthawk. What can I say? But There's a little meanness in that smile. Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least, that's what my grandma always told me. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. A bit much? What are you talking about? That's what my grandma told me, okay? She feels interrogated now. It's hard to say if she's lying. Relax, miss. This is not an interrogation. We are just checking some facts. Nitrogen and sulfur mostly. And whatever factories and aerostatics exhale too, I guess. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? That's right. And the canal. The bookstore. The harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. No, of course not. I don't understand what this is about. The kid did this, right? The red-haired rat? Can't say a sentence without or kipped? He's always giving me trouble. It is because he sent you to harass me, didn't he? You shouldn't listen to him. It was probably him who wrote that. You've been resting here for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. There's silence. The smallest of smiles. That's okay, miss. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Let's go. We should think about calling it a day, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. You should take care of that, then. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? What about what I have been through, huh? You're not the goddamn protagonist of this story. I am. This is my hostel cafeteria, and I need my money. Literary demotion. That's the worst. Good luck trying to use it. Draconian measures. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. Not until you bring me the money. Okay, 
I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. Their silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official's son and high. Mm -hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. I don't know, is it? I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. There are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. A vanity he wouldn't mind. No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners. That would be outrageous. Exactly. The spinners shine so bright they reflect on the lieutenant's glasses. He doesn't say anything either. Yes, there's one 100 meters south of here. I think it's called Roy's Nest or something. If I'm not mistaken, it should be open with it. All right, let's not take them now. Then come back once we realize we have to. Have this conversation again, and then take them. Sounds likely. The cage at the I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. I haven't had any problems myself. Though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. 
Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. It keeps me entertained. Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the mind continues to race forward? Lucky bastard, he's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects and it makes your eyes turn yellow. I try to keep the shop at a comfortable temperature. There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. Prolodon is just something I... You know, since the People's Power disaster. <coughs> I was with the Emergency Relief Brigade. Had to take it for radiation sickness. He's taken for mental and emotional, not physical pain these days. A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Probably some of it in you, too. We were an all-volunteer force. Self-organized. Tried to help the fire brigades contain the spill. On the patch, gamma radiation lines crossed with a red drop of blood. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance. Didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment, an early death, cancer mostly, and we knew all that was coming even as we were cleaning up as best we could. No one's, everyone's. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm gonna get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... I like the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. 
Bad for business. Bad for everyone. He doesn't know anything. He's been by the shop a couple of times. There was something awfully deliberate about that laziness. They weren't the most pleasant interactions. Small town bigwigs always want everyone to play a part in the play they're staging. But I bowed out at some point. I prefer to watch from afar while the bigwigs come and go. It was all very strange. That forewoman was... More pleasant than Evrard, but I guess it's all the same in the end. He tried, wanted to come to some mutually beneficial agreement around my dealings with the dock workers. I politely declined to hear him out. So you don't know what kind of arrangement he was talking about? As I said, I refused to talk to him. That's why he came back a second time. That's also why he hasn't come back a third. He purchased a remarkably garish paperweight the first time he was here. Nothing the second. He nods reluctantly. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 rael. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Of course. I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Here's the 30 real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. The windfall is a small consolation. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Anything else you're thinking of selling? Another time, perhaps.
Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? Well? Great, thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9 p.m. tomorrow. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I'll take a room here too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. The living shit. Your mesolimbic reward pathway does not mince words. It wants smokes. Who knows what you are? A monster. A murderer. The gnome of Jeroma. You feel like a smoker. Especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub, still smoldering deliciously. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied. Then smoke them all. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Like a cat rubbing itself against its owner's calves. A cat that wants you to smoke a lot. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Just a moment. You had some questions earlier, I believe. And besides, we should discuss our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Where shall we begin? 
We should talk about the investigation, first and foremost. But I also remember you wanting to discuss the RCM. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my nose. It's something of a ritual. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. I apologize, but I only brought one with me. I have exactly one cigarette every night while going over my nose. You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. This man relishes his cool quite a bit, below him. Yes, it's been a long and even full day. We performed a thorough initial inspection of the victim's body, so that's good. One could say it's the main thing to do in a murder. Then you shot the body down, which was quite a shot. I admit I wasn't sure whether I should give you the gun, but I'm glad I did. Your shot enabled us to perform a field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. I still feel like we missed something, but at least the corpse has been refrigerated. And we performed a thorough search of the premises of the crime scene. That's great. He's right. You could smell it. That something is missing even under the overpowering odor of the corpse. Now, as for interviews, my list of people to talk to here in Martinez, I mean. Not always the right people, I'm afraid. We weren't able to find the union leader, Evrat Claire, much less interview him. So that's on the to-do list for tomorrow. We tried to interview the wife Anne's rep, but she asked us to do something for her first. Fine, so be it. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Prison 41 practice? I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until we get up tomorrow. It's impressive, especially for a man your age, and in those hills. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses, in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. The RCM's primary role is to ensure safety. We are not really supposed to play any part in the economic structure of Ravachol. Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold slip. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. Not a good position to be in, by the way. 
Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly by cross-examining new foreign consistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. Yes, the international community's mission in Ravachol, and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed the DRCM. It's probably more honest, yes. Either way, the Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. Okay. They are a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. Something ominous. Something even a little feminine. But in a strict manner. Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. A historic figure? the author of the modern age, you will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. For you, she is something painful, though it's hard to say why. The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. And it doesn't look like that's about to happen. It is more than that. There's some kind of affection in him. Yes, I did, when I was younger. In my twenties, I considered myself a moralist. A blue forget-me-not, a piece of the sky. They're not all that bad. That's another light motif associated with moralism. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. Do you? In fact, we would need them even if you didn't think that way. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Spoken like a revolutionary, not a cop. But hypothetical aside, in Martinez we already are vigilantes. At least the Union thinks so. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly, like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. It's different in land, in Jamrock and the GRIH. 
It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs, to the Union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. We run this city. West of the river is RCM land. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. Probably not. Anyway, positive change happens slowly. We never really get to see the impact of our actions. He is very tired, but the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go.